Yeah. Looks like Iran is back to maybe sort of rattling the sword, Halima. You know what I yeah. you know what I know what that means. What do they want? Well, we've had incidents over the summer where we've had, you know, Iranian ships getting very close to U.S. ships in the Straits of Hormuz. We had President Trump threatening to blow Iranian ships out of the water earlier this summer. And so this is really nothing new, but it comes in the context, as we discussed last time I was on air, that you've had these mysterious explosions in Iran at key nuclear sites. People think maybe that was tied to Israel. And so we're having renewed tension in the region. And it comes at a really delicate moment for Iran, because if Joe Biden becomes president, they're facing the prospect of significant sanctions relief. So any type of escalation now in the region could put that at risk. So I think the Iranians are in a very, very delicate situation. But there are hardliners there that don't want to go back into the nuclear deal, that want to respond to the Israelis. And so there are all these things going on that make it a kind of a combustible mix right now. All right, the IEA out saying that oil demand may remain weak not only this year, but next year, primarily because of jet fuel. If nobody's flying, you don't need to burn jet fuel. Right. We do have an OPEC-JMMC, Joint Ministerial Monitoring Committee meeting, next Tuesday. What do you think that OPEC is going to do, if anything, in reaction to those IEA headlines? Well, they've started their easing process. I mean, that was announced at the last JMMC meeting. And right now, well, you really see an effort on the part of Saudi Arabia to try to make sure that everybody is compliant. So as they scale back the official cuts, what they're trying to do is make countries like Iraq and Nigeria, the perennial OPEC cheaters, not only become 100 percent compliant with their quotas, but to essentially make compensatory cuts, do extra. So they're saying the cut's not really going to scale back by 2 million barrels a day, but will be smaller because of what Iraq and Nigeria are going to offer up. But I think it's an open question how much more these countries are going to give. And it's a kind of a delicate moment for OPEC to be putting barrels back on the market. Yes, we've seen Chinese demand roaring back, but it really remains muted in Europe and the U.S. Yeah, right now they're, they're cutting by 7.7 .7 million barrels a day effectively. Do you think that stands after next week? Well, that will stand. I mean, the bigger question is, do countries now start cheating? Like once you've essentially said, we're going to start the process of bringing those barrels back, does everybody abide by their quotas? Now, the Saudis have said their increased production is only going to go for the domestic market to meet domestic surge in power demand. But, you know, it's an interesting question about Will Russian compliance remain solid? Will other countries continue to abide by their quotas? Right now, it looks like they have done a good job. I mean, His Royal Highness has really been the OPEC whip as Saudi oil minister, and it looks like compliance is holding. But this is something we will certainly watch. And again, if we start to see more concerns about demand, if we get seeing more situations of lockdown conditions, can OPEC change course? Can they actually take more barrels off the market quickly? It is a very delicate market right now. It is being held up by Chinese demand and Chinese buying.